Brownian motion or padesis from ancient Greek, padesis pad epsilon cis, leaping, is the random motion of particles suspended in a fluid, a liquid or a gas, resulting from their collision with the fast-moving molecules in the fluid. This pattern of motion typically alternates random fluctuations in a particle's position inside a fluid subdomain with a relocation to another subdomain. Each relocation is followed by more fluctuations within the new closed volume. This pattern describes a fluid at thermal equilibrium, defined by a given temperature. Within such fluid there exists no preferential direction of flow as in transport phenomena. More specifically the fluid's overall linear and angular momenta remain null over time. It is important also to note that the kinetic energies of the molecular Brownian motions, together with those of molecular rotations and vibrations sum up to the caloric component of a fluid's internal energy. This motion is named after the botanist Robert Brown, who was the most eminent microscopist of his time. In 1827, while looking through a microscope at pollen of the plant Clarkia pulchella immersed in water, the triangular-shaped pollen burst at the corners, emitting particles which he noted jiggled around in the water in random fashion. He was not able to determine the mechanisms that caused this motion. Atoms and molecules had long been theorized as the constituents of matter, and Albert Einstein published a paper in 1905 that explained in precise detail how the motion that Brown had observed was a result of the pollen being moved by individual water molecules, making one of his first big contributions to science. This explanation of Brownian motion served as convincing evidence that atoms and molecules exist, and was further verified experimentally by Jean Perrin in 1908. Perrin was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1926, "...for his work on the discontinuous structure of matter." The direction of the force of atomic bombardment is constantly changing, and at different times the particle is hit more on one side than another, leading to the seemingly random nature of the motion. The many body interactions that yield the Brownian pattern cannot be solved by a model accounting for every involved molecule. In consequence only probabilistic models applied to molecular populations can be employed to describe it. Two such models of the statistical mechanics, due to Einstein and Smolahovsky are presented below. Another, pure probabilistic class of models is the class of the stochastic process models. There exist both simpler and more complicated stochastic processes which in extreme, taken to the limit, may describe the Brownian motion see random walk in Donsker's theorem. Topic. History The Roman Lucretius's scientific poem, On the Nature of Things, c. 60 BC, has a remarkable description of Brownian motion of dust particles in verses 113-140 from Book 2. He uses this as a proof of the existence of atoms. Observe what happens when sunbeams are admitted into a building and shed light on its shadowy places. You will see a multitude of tiny particles mingling in a multitude of ways. Their dancing is an actual indication of underlying movements of matter that are hidden from our sight. It originates with the atoms which move of themselves, i.e., spontaneously. Then those small compound bodies that are least removed from the impetus of the atoms are set in motion by the impact of their invisible blows and in turn cannon against slightly larger bodies. So the movement mounts up from the atoms and gradually emerges to the level of our senses, so that those bodies are in motion that we see in sunbeams, moved by blows that remain invisible. Although the mingling motion of dust particles is caused largely by air currents, the glittering, tumbling motion of small dust particles is, indeed, caused chiefly by true Brownian dynamics. While Jan Ingenhuis described the irregular motion of coal dust particles on the surface of alcohol in 1785, the discovery of this phenomenon is often credited to the botanist Robert Brown in 1827. Brown was studying pollen grains of the plant Clarkia pulchella suspended in water under a microscope when he observed minute particles, ejected by the pollen grains, executing a jittery motion. By repeating the experiment with particles of inorganic matter he was able to rule out that the motion was life-related, although its origin was yet to be explained. The first person to describe the mathematics behind Brownian motion was Thorval N. Tila in a paper on the method of least squares published in 1880. This was followed independently by Louis Bachelier in 1900 in his PhD thesis, The Theory of Speculation, 
in which he presented a stochastic analysis of the stock and option markets. The Brownian motion model of the stock market is often cited, but Benoit Mandelbrot rejected its applicability to stock price movements in part because these are discontinuous. Albert Einstein, in one of his 1905 papers, and Marian Smolahovsky, 1906, brought the solution of the problem to the attention of physicists and presented it as a way to indirectly confirm the existence of atoms and molecules. Their equations describing Brownian motion were subsequently verified by the experimental work of Jean-Baptiste Perrin in 1908. Statistical mechanics theories Einstein's theory There are two parts to Einstein's theory, the first part consists in the formulation of a diffusion equation for Brownian particles, in which the diffusion coefficient is related to the mean squared displacement of a Brownian particle, while the second part consists in relating the diffusion coefficient to measurable physical quantities. In this way Einstein was able to determine the size of atoms, and how many atoms there are in a mole, or the molecular weight in grams, of a gas. In accordance to Avogadro's law this volume is the same for all ideal gases, which is 22.414 liters at standard temperature and pressure. The number of atoms contained in this volume is referred to as Avogadro's constant, and the determination of this number is tantamount to the knowledge of the mass of an atom since the latter is obtained by dividing the mass of a mole of the gas by Avogadro's constant. The first part of Einstein's argument was to determine how far a Brownian particle travels in a given time interval. Classical mechanics is unable to determine this distance because of the enormous number of bombardments a Brownian particle will undergo, roughly of the order of 1014 collisions per second. Thus Einstein was led to consider the collective motion of Brownian particles, he regarded the increment of particle positions in time tau tau in a one-dimensional space with the coordinates chosen so that the origin lies at the initial position of the particle as a random variable delta display style delta with some probability density function phi delta display style var phi delta Further, assuming conservation of particle number, he expanded the density number of particles per unit volume at time t plus tau display style t plus tau in a taylor series rho x t plus tau rho x t plus equals rho x t plus tau equals minus infinity plus infinity rho x minus delta t phi delta d delta equals e delta rho x t plus tau equals Rho x t minus infinity plus infinity phi delta d delta minus rho x minus infinity plus infinity delta phi delta d Delta plus two row x two minus infinity plus infinity Delta two two phi delta d delta plus equals rho x t one plus zero plus two rho x two minus infinity plus infinity delta two two phi delta d delta plus display style begin aligned rho x t plus tau frac partial rho x partial t plus c d o t s equals rho x t plus tau equals and int underscore inf t caret plus inf t rho 
x delta t c d o t var phi delta mathrm d delta equals math b e underscore delta rho x t plus tau equals and rho x t c d o t int underscore n a t caret plus n a t var phi delta d delta frac partial rho partial x c d o t int underscore n a t caret plus n a t delta c d o t var phi delta mathrm d delta and plus frac partial caret 2 rho partial x caret 2 c d o t int underscore n a t caret plus n a t frac delta caret 2 2 c d o t var phi delta mathrm d delta plus c d o t s equals and rho x t c d o t 1 plus 0 plus frac partial caret 2 rho partial x caret 2 c d o t int underscore n a t caret plus n a t frac delta caret 2 2 c d o t var phi delta mathrm d delta plus c d o t s end aligned where the second equality in the first line is by definition of phi display style var phi the integral in the first term is equal to 1 by the definition of probability and the second and other even terms ie first and other odd moments vanish because of space symmetry what is left gives rise to the following relation: rho t equals two rho x two minus infinity plus infinity delta two two tau phi delta d delta plus higher order even moments. Display style frac partial rho partial t equals frac partial caret two rho partial x caret two c d o t in underscore n a t caret plus n a t frac delta caret two two tau c d o t var phi delta mathrm d delta plus text higher order even moments where the coefficient after the Laplacian the second moment of probability of displacement delta Display style delta is interpreted as mass diffusivity d d equals minus infinity plus infinity delta two two tau phi delta d delta Display style d equals int underscore n a t caret plus n a t frac delta caret two two tau c d o t var phi delta mathrm d delta. Then the density of Brownian particles rho at point x at time t satisfies the diffusion equation. Rho t equals d two rho x two Display style frac partial rho partial t equals d c d o t frac partial caret two rho partial x caret two. Assuming that n particles start from the origin at the initial time t equals zero, the diffusion equation has the solution rho x t equals n four pi d t e minus x 2 4 d t display style rho x t equals frac n s q r t 4 pi d t e caret frac x caret 2 4 d t this expression which is a normal distribution with the mean mu equals 0 Display style mu equals zero, and variance sigma two equals two d t. Display style sigma caret two equals two d t. Usually called Brownian motion. B t. Display style b underscore t. Allowed Einstein to calculate the moments directly. The first moment is seen to vanish, meaning that the Brownian particle is equally likely to move to the left as it is to move to the right. The second moment is, however, non-vanishing, being given by x 2 equals 2 d t display style overline x caret 2 equals 2 d t. This equation expresses the mean squared displacement in terms of the time elapsed and the diffusivity. 
From this expression Einstein argued that the displacement of a Brownian particle is not proportional to the elapsed time, but rather to its square root. His argument is based on a conceptual switch from the ensemble of Brownian particles to the single Brownian particle. We can speak of the relative number of particles at a single instant just as well as of the time it takes a Brownian particle to reach a given point. The second part of Einstein's theory relates the diffusion constant to physically measurable quantities, such as the mean squared displacement of a particle in a given time interval. This result enables the experimental determination of Avogadro's number and therefore the size of molecules. Einstein analyzed a dynamic equilibrium being established between opposing forces. The beauty of his argument is that the final result does not depend upon which forces are involved in setting up the dynamic equilibrium. In his original treatment, Einstein considered an osmotic pressure experiment, but the same conclusion can be reached in other ways. Consider, for instance, particles suspended in a viscous fluid in a gravitational field. Gravity tends to make the particles settle, whereas diffusion acts to homogenize them, driving them into regions of smaller concentration. Under the action of gravity, a particle acquires a downward speed of v equals mu mg, where m is the mass of the particle, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and mu is the particle's mobility in the fluid. George Stokes had shown that the mobility for a spherical particle with radius r is mu equals 1 6 pi eta r display style mu equals tfrac 1 6 pi eta r where eta is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid in a state of dynamic equilibrium, and under the hypothesis of isothermal fluid, the particles are distributed according to the barometric distribution. Rho equals Rho zero E minus M G H K B T Display style row equals row underscore zero e caret frac m g h k underscore erm b t, where row minus row zero is the difference in density of particles separated by a height difference of h. K b is Boltzmann's constant, namely the ratio of the universal gas constant r to Avogadro's number n, and t is the absolute temperature. Avogadro's number is to be determined. Dynamic equilibrium is established because the more that particles are pulled down by gravity, the greater the tendency for the particles to migrate to regions of lower concentration. The flux is given by Fick's law. J equals minus d d rho d h. Display style J equals d frac d rho d h where j equals rho v introducing the formula for rho we find that v equals d m g k b t display style v equals frac dmg k underscore erm b t in a state of dynamical equilibrium this speed must also be equal to v equals mu mg Notice that both expressions for V are proportional to mg, reflecting that the derivation is independent of the type of forces considered. Similarly, one can derive an equivalent formula for identical charged particles of charge Q in a uniform electric field of magnitude E, where mg is replaced with the electrostatic force QE. Equating these two expressions yields a formula for the diffusivity, independent of mg or QE or other such forces. X 2 t equals d equals mu k b t equals mu r t n equals r t 6 pi eta r n Display style frac overline x caret two two t equals d equals mu k underscore erm b t equals frac mu r t n equals frac r t six pi eta r n. 
Here the first equality follows from the first part of Einstein's theory, the third equality follows from the definition of Boltzmann's constant as Kb equals R, N, and the fourth equality follows from Stokes's formula for the mobility. By measuring the mean squared displacement over a time interval along with the universal gas constant R, the temperature T, the viscosity eta, and the particle radius R, Avogadro's number N can be determined. The type of dynamical equilibrium proposed by Einstein was not new. It had been pointed out previously by J. J. Thomson in his series of lectures at Yale University in May 1903 that the dynamic equilibrium between the velocity generated by a concentration gradient given by Fick's law and the velocity due to the variation of the partial pressure caused when ions are set in motion, "...gives us a method of determining Avogadro's constant which is independent of any hypothesis as to the shape or size of molecules, or of the way in which they act upon each other." An identical expression to Einstein's formula for the diffusion coefficient was also found by Walther Nernst in 1888 in which he expressed the diffusion coefficient as the ratio of the osmotic pressure to the ratio of the frictional force and the velocity to which it gives rise. The former was equated to the law of van t Hoff while the latter was given by Stokes's law. He writes k equals p 0 k Display style k equals p underscore zero k for the diffusion coefficient k, where p zero display style p underscore zero is the osmotic pressure and k is the ratio of the frictional force to the molecular viscosity, which he assumes is given by Stokes's formula for the viscosity. Introducing the ideal gas law per unit volume for the osmotic pressure, the formula becomes identical to that of Einstein's. The use of Stokes's law in Nernst's case, as well as in Einstein and Smolahovsky, is not strictly applicable since it does not apply to the case where the radius of the sphere is small in comparison with the mean free path. At first, the predictions of Einstein's formula were seemingly refuted by a series of experiments by Svedberg in 1906 and 1907, which gave displacements of the particles as four to six times the predicted value, and by Henri in 1908 who found displacements three times greater than Einstein's formula predicted. Predicted. But Einstein's predictions were finally confirmed in a series of experiments carried out by Chattisegs in 1908 and Perrin in 1909. The confirmation of Einstein's theory constituted empirical progress for the kinetic theory of heat. In essence, Einstein showed that the motion can be predicted directly from the kinetic model of thermal equilibrium. The importance of the theory lay in the fact that it confirmed the kinetic theory's account of the second law of thermodynamics as being an essentially statistical law. Topic: <laughs> Smolahovsky model. Smolahovsky's theory of Brownian motion starts from the same premise as that of Einstein and derives the same probability distribution ρ x, t for the displacement of a Brownian particle along the x in time t. He therefore gets the same expression for the mean squared displacement delta x 2 display style overline delta x caret 2 However, when he relates it to a particle of mass m moving at a velocity u which is the result of a frictional force governed by Stokes's law, he finds delta x 2 equals 2 d t equals t 32 81 mu 2 pi mu equals t 64 27 1 2 mu 2 3 pi mu Display style overline delta x caret two equals two d t equals t frac thirty two eighty one frac mu caret two pi mu a equals t frac sixty four twenty seven frac frac one two mu caret two three pi mu a, where mu is the viscosity coefficient and a is the radius of the particle. Associating the kinetic energy, mu two two Display style mu caret two two 
with the thermal energy RT, N, the expression for the mean squared displacement is 64 27 times that found by Einstein. The fraction 27 64 was commented on by Arnold Sommerfeld in his Necrology on Smolahovsky. The numerical coefficient of Einstein, which differs from Smolahovsky by 27 64 can only be put in doubt. Smolahovsky attempts to answer the question of why a Brownian particle should be displaced by bombardments of smaller particles when the probabilities for striking it in the forward and rear directions are equal. If the probability of m gains and n minus m losses follows a binomial distribution, p m n equals n m two minus n Display style p underscore m n equals binom n m two caret n with equal a priori probabilities of one half. The mean total gain is two m minus n equals m equals n two n two m minus n p M N equals N N two N N two two Display style overline two meters N equals sum underscore M equals FRAC N two carrot N two meters N P underscore M N equals FRAC N N two carrot N left left FRAC N two right right carrot two If N is large enough so that Stirling's approximation can be used in the form N approximately equals N E N Two pi n display style n approximately left frac n e right caret n sqrt two pi n. Then the expected total gain will be two m minus n approximately equals two n pi. Display style overline two meters n approximately sqrt frac two n pi, showing that it increases as the square root of the total population. Suppose that a Brownian particle of mass m is surrounded by lighter particles of mass m, which are traveling at a speed u. Then, reasons Smolahovsky, in any collision between a surrounding and Brownian particles, the velocity transmitted to the latter will be mu m. This ratio is of the order of 10-7 cm per second. But we also have to take into consideration that in a gas there will be more than 10-16 collisions in a second, and even greater in a liquid where we expect that there will be 10-20 collision in one second. Some of these collisions will tend to accelerate the Brownian particle, others will tend to decelerate it. If there is a mean excess of one kind of collision or the other to be of the order of 108 to 1010 10 collisions in one second, then velocity of the Brownian particle may be anywhere between 10 and 1000 cm per second. Thus, even though there are equal probabilities for forward and backward collisions there will be a net tendency to keep the Brownian particle in motion, just as the Ballot theorem predicts. These orders of magnitude are not exact because they don't take into consideration the velocity of the Brownian particle, u, which depends on the collisions that tend to accelerate and decelerate it. The larger u is, the greater will be the collisions that will retard it so that the velocity of a Brownian particle can never increase without limit. Could such a process occur, it would be tantamount to a perpetual motion of the second type. And since equipartition of energy applies, the kinetic energy of the Brownian particle m U two two display style mu caret two two will be equal, on the average, to the kinetic energy of the surrounding fluid particle m u two two display style mu caret two two. In 1906, Smolahovsky published a one-dimensional model to describe a particle undergoing Brownian motion. The model assumes collisions with m m where m is the test particle's mass and m the mass of one of the individual particles composing the fluid. 
It is assumed that the particle collisions are confined to one dimension and that it is equally probable for the test particle to be hit from the left as from the right. It is also assumed that every collision always imparts the same magnitude of delta v. If nr is the number of collisions from the right and nl the number of collisions from the left then after n collisions the particle's velocity will have changed by delta v 2 nr minus n. The multiplicity is then simply given by n n r equals n n r n, n Minus n r display style binom n n underscore erm r equals frac n n underscore erm r n n underscore erm r, and the total number of possible states is given by two n. Therefore, the probability of the particle being hit from the right n r times is p n n r equals n Two N N R N minus N R display style p underscore n n underscore erm r equals frac n two caret n n underscore erm r n n underscore erm r. As a result of its simplicity, Smolahovsky's one D model can only qualitatively describe Brownian motion. For a realistic particle undergoing Brownian motion in a fluid many of the assumptions cannot be made. For example, the assumption that on average occurs an equal number of collisions from the right as from the left falls apart once the particle is in motion. Also, there would be a distribution of different possible delta verses instead of always just one in a realistic situation. Other physics models using partial differential equations The diffusion equation yields an approximation of the time evolution of the probability density function associated to the position of the particle going under a Brownian movement under the physical definition. The approximation is valid on short timescales. The time evolution of the position of the Brownian particle itself is best described using Langevin equation, an equation which involves a random force field representing the effect of the thermal fluctuations of the solvent on the particle. The displacement of a particle undergoing Brownian motion is obtained by solving the diffusion equation under appropriate boundary conditions and finding the RMS of the solution. This shows that the displacement varies as the square root of the time not linearly, which explains why previous experimental results concerning the velocity of Brownian particles gave nonsensical results. A linear time dependence was incorrectly assumed. At very short time scales, however, the motion of a particle is dominated by its inertia and its displacement will be linearly dependent on time, delta x. Topic v delta t. So the instantaneous velocity of the Brownian motion can be measured as v delta x delta t when delta t Topic <laughs> Astrophysics star motion within galaxies In stellar dynamics a massive body star black hole etc can experience Brownian motion as it responds to gravitational forces from surrounding stars the RMS velocity v of the massive object, of mass m, is related to the RMS velocity v of the background stars by m v 2 approximately equals m v 2 display style m v caret 2 approximately m v underscore star caret 2 where m m display style m l l m is the mass of the background stars the gravitational force from the massive object causes nearby stars to move faster than they otherwise would increasing both v display style v underscore star and v the brownian velocity of sgra asterisk the supermassive black hole at the center of the milky way galaxy is predicted from this formula to be less than 1 km s minus 1 topic mathematics 
In mathematics, Brownian motion is described by the Wiener process, a continuous time stochastic process named in honor of Norbert Wiener. It is one of the best known Levy processes, Cadillac stochastic processes with stationary independent increments and occurs frequently in pure and applied mathematics, economics and physics. The Wiener process WT is characterized by four facts. W0 equals 0. WT is almost surely continuous. WT has independent increments. W T minus W S N zero T minus S display style W underscore T W underscore S sim math call N zero T S four zero S T display style zero L E Q S L E Q T N mu sigma two Display style math call n mu sigma caret two denotes the normal distribution with expected value mu and variance sigma two. The condition that it has independent increments means that if zero s one t one s two t two display style zero l e q s underscore one then w t one minus w s one display style w underscore t underscore one w underscore s underscore one and w t two minus w s two display style w underscore t underscore two w underscore s underscore two are independent random variables. An alternative characterization of the Wiener process is the so-called Levy characterization that says that the Wiener process is an almost surely continuous martingale with W0 equals 0 and quadratic variation. W T W T equals T display style W underscore T W underscore T equals T a third characterization is that the Wiener process has a spectral representation as a sine series whose coefficients are independent n 0 1 display style math call n 0 1 random variables this representation can be obtained using the karhunen lowe theorem the Wiener process can be constructed as the scaling limit of a random walk, or other discrete time stochastic processes with stationary independent increments. This is known as Donsker's theorem. Like the random walk, the Wiener process is recurrent in one or two dimensions meaning that it returns almost surely to any fixed neighborhood of the origin infinitely often whereas it is not recurrent in dimensions three and higher. Unlike the random walk, it is scale invariant. The time evolution of the position of the Brownian particle itself can be described approximately by a Langevin equation, an equation which involves a random force field representing the effect of the thermal fluctuations of the solvent on the Brownian particle. On long timescales, the mathematical Brownian motion is well described by a Langevin equation. On small timescales, inertial effects are prevalent in the Langevin equation. However the mathematical Brownian motion is exempt of such inertial effects. Note that inertial effects have to be considered in the Langevin equation, otherwise the equation becomes singular, so that simply removing the inertia term from this equation would not yield an exact description, but rather a singular behavior in which the particle doesn't move at all. Statistics The Brownian motion can be modeled by a random walk. Random walks in porous media or fractals are anomalous. In the general case, Brownian motion is a non Markov random process and described by stochastic integral equations. Levy characterization The French mathematician Paul Levy proved the following theorem, which gives a necessary and sufficient condition for a continuous Rn-valued stochastic process X to actually be n-dimensional Brownian motion. Hence, Levy's condition can actually be used as an alternative definition of Brownian motion. Let X equals X1 Xn be a continuous stochastic process on a probability space omega, sigma, p, taking values in Rn. Then the following are equivalent. 
X is a Brownian motion with respect to P, i.e., the law of X with respect to P is the same as the law of an n-dimensional Brownian motion, i.e., the push-forward measure X P is classical Wiener measure on CO zero plus infinity, Rn. Both X is a martingale with respect to P and its own natural filtration, and for all one i j n she t x j t minus delta i j t is a martingale with respect to p and its own natural filtration, where delta i j denotes the Kronecker delta. Topic: Riemannian manifold. The infinitesimal generator and hence characteristic operator of a Brownian motion on Rn is easily calculated to be delta, where delta denotes the Laplace operator. In image processing and computer vision, the Laplacian operator has been used for various tasks such as blob and edge detection. This observation is useful in defining Brownian motion on an m-dimensional Riemannian manifold m, g, a Brownian motion on m is defined to be a diffusion on m whose characteristic operator Display style math call a in local coordinates she one i m is given by delta l b, where delta l b is the Laplace Beltrami operator given in local coordinates by delta l b equals one det g i equals one m x i Debt G J equals one M G I J X J Display style delta underscore mathem L B equals F R A C one S Q R T debt G sum underscore I equals one carrot M F R A C partial partial X underscore I left S Q R T debt G sum underscore J equals one carrot M G carrot I J F R A C partial partial X underscore J right where G I J equals G I J minus one in the sense of the inverse of a square matrix equals topic narrow escape equals the narrow escape problem is a ubiquitous problem in biology biophysics and cellular biology which has the following formulation a brownian particle ion molecule or protein is confined to a bounded domain a compartment or a cell by a reflecting boundary except for a small window through which it can escape the narrow escape problem is that of calculating the mean escape time. This time diverges as the window shrinks, thus rendering the calculation a singular perturbation problem. See also <laughs> <laughs>